You like to play video games. You like them so much that you start to think to yourself, man, I can develop a game on my own. I have this cool idea and this cool mechanic. How hard can it be? Well, how much work can be done in about two months? Well, in this video, you will see how much progress you can make. Hello there, developer Oats here, a game developer who likes to develop a game in his free time. The last devlog is a bit back, so let's see what I've done in this time. My goal is to develop a real-time strategy game where the map is a solar system and your goal is to conquer the system. Let's dive into this. I do not like the overall art style of the game. Currently, to be honest, there is no real art style. Me as a solo developer of a game, studying computer science and working as a software developer, I want a simple and yet visually nice style. I started to think what kind of style I like and what is easy. I played a lot of Risk of Rain 2. This game is a good roguelike. This game has a comic art style which I quite like. It's super simple and yet it looks very very nice. The style is called cell shading. It looks easy. None of these realistic graphics. Realistic graphics are only really possible if you have a team of artists working for you. Not really suitable for me. So going with a simple art style is my choice. This sounds way more organized than what I originally did. Hmm, I need a better art style. Better to hammer this one down early. I like the art style from Borderlands and Risk of Rain 2. What is the art style of this Risk of Rain called? Ah, cell shading. Okay. So, cell shading Godot engine. Uh huh. Uh huh. This one looks good. Let's apply this to every surface I have on the planet. Nice! Game dev can be easy sometimes. So, with a direction where the art style goes, I can put this into action to improve the terrain of the planet. The current terrain my planet generator generates doesn't suit my purpose. I want to have more control over the terrain. Currently, there are too many sliders and the result doesn't suit me. My first approach was simple. I googled procedural planet generator and got the video from Sebastian. But the problem with this approach is that I cannot really work with this. When I think of other RTS like StarCraft, we can see that there is a high ground and a low ground but not much between them. This is what I want for my game. Make the terrain more simple and only have a little height difference. So I started to change the terrain generation. This looks nice. Am I right? I really, really love this new look. It looks simple and yet interesting. But how did I do this? Well, mainly I decided that I only want to have four terrain types. Water, grass, hill and mountains. When the terrain type of a vertex is calculated, place into one of the four terrain types. Each terrain type has its own height. The terrain type is calculated by a noise which takes the 3D position of a vertex. Then the output of the noise is added into my code and we know the terrain type of the vertex. With the terrain type, the height can be calculated. Afterwards, I added my new cell shading colors to the terrain and got the result. Next on my list is the water. Just the blue water looks boring and cheap. My idea is to add a second sphere onto the planet. This sphere will display the water. Hmm, <laughs> doesn't look that interesting. So I need some colors. This means shaders. I looked up some water shaders for Godot. Again, Godot shaders comes to the rescue. Took one that looks good. Now I added this one onto the sphere and see how it looks. Wow, that looks nice. And this with the default parameters of the shader. Now let's play around with the parameters of the shader. There's a bunch to play with. Wow, that's just nice. Now I'm very happy with the overall look of the terrain. I can improve it in the future with some extra textures, but it looks quite good for now. Now this one. This one was the trickiest of all of them. Can you spot it? It's the planet. It's orbiting around the sun and spinning at the same time. This may seem like it's nothing, but it took quite some time to do so. This is a story of misery and despair. In the beginning the planet didn't orbit around the sun and the planet didn't rotate. So I changed the planet to a rigid body instead of a static body since I want the planet to move. I wrote some code and now the world is spinning and orbiting. For now. After settling the terrain aspect, I can work on a core feature of the game adding buildings to my RTS. So I started to think of a suiting first building. My idea was a command center or town center to produce workers. Well, I will call it administration center. Totally something unique. I started by modeling this center. I wrote a custom importer to give me attributes each of the building needs. This way I do not have to do this manually 
for each building. I added a spawn location into the game, so I can start here with my cool building. Huh, this looks small. Wait, what is this? Why is the planet moving away from the sun? Oh, it's because the building is pushing away the planet. Nice. I changed the code a bit and now it works again. For now. I reworked the administration center and made it bigger and a bit different. I added a function to click the building and get a menu with some information. I also added a menu to start building a building. I added a spawner for the enemy building. I mean on an RTS you need to fight. After spawning the enemy building, one key aspect disturbs me. The player cannot really tell whether the building is an enemy building or his own. One solution would be using totally different buildings for the enemy. I could make an alien race and you would fight them. But I like the idea where you and the enemy can have the same buildings. The only things that change are the colors. Also, this looks cool to have all the different colors on the building. Now I need to add this feature into my game. I came up with a cool and yet simple solution. When I model my 3D models, I use a special material to color triangles of my model. In my case, it's always the second material of each building and unit. Now I need to keep this fact in my mind till the end of eternity and all will be okay. In my code, the second material will be swapped with the color I define. So I start with the most simple colors. The player has the color blue and the enemy the color red. In the future, I can add more colors and change them easily. The groundworks for the buildings is done. So I move to the next important aspect, units. First, I need workers to build stuff and gather resources. Of course, I will not name them workers. They are construction units. Again, something totally new. So say hello to Irvin, friendly construction unit. Doesn't this one look fabulous? I modeled him in Blender and made some animations. Here I also wrote a custom importer to generate the attributes and resources every unit needs. I worked with the animation tree node in Godot, which will handle the animation for me. Now the construction unit can run, stand around in the fields, attack some buildings and construct your buildings. Thanks Godot for this one. Next I added a button to spawn construction units. Currently there is no cost to spawn a unit, something that will be changed in the future. I also added some pathfinding into the game. I can left click a unit and right click to the desired destination. Then the navigation node will calculate a path for me. This is one of the reasons why I use a game engine. Again, it saves a lot of time. Also, I added a path so you can see how the unit walks. Wait, why does the unit move so awkward? Oh no. Again, the problem was the rotating planet. This messed up the pathfinding. Nice. Now I think you can understand why the rotating, orbiting planet was such a pain. After some code iterations, the pathfinding works again. Next is the addition of the famous click rectangle. It's a rectangle where I can select every unit which are in the current rectangle and I can display them on a menu. Here I can also click on one of the units and have only the selected unit. After selecting, it's now time to move the group. When researching this topic, how to move a group of units to a destination, I entered a rabbit hole. There are many, many approaches to do this. I use the approach of Boids. These are small units called Boids and they move as a swarm to a certain point. This is done by applying three rules to a moving unit. First rule, separation. This rule calculates a vector so that the single Boid moves away from the swarm to have a minimum social distance. Second rule, alignment. This rule calculates a vector so that the void looks into the same direction as the swarm. Third rule, cohesion. This rule calculates a vector so that the void moves with the swarm. More information can be seen in the nicely made video from This is Vinny. He explains this with more detail. So with this code I calculate the vectors and add them together to have a moving group. Furthermore, you can see the debug vectors for each of the rules. With this, I can see if the calculations are done well. The longer the vector, the more impact this vector has on calculating to move next. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. Wait, why does the planet move? Ah, I see. If I have enough units, these units can push the planet away from the sun. Nice. Again, I fixed this one in the code. So that's why the moving and spinning planet is the worst and a horrible thing. 
Some things that we take for granted really, really need a lot of work to work correctly. My gut is telling me that this is not the end of the story. No wonder why every strategy game just uses rectangular maps as their maps. Now I can understand. Well, now back again to the fun stuff. I like the method Empire Earth uses for its buildings. The buildings just come from the ground and are at full height when completed. This is simple since creating meshes to show the building is building is time intensive. The goal for us game developers is saving time. So I added this in Godot. Now the construction unit lives up to its name. It can construct a building. I also generate the construction mesh for this building. So you know the building needs to be finished. I can also use this to display what building you have selected. I added an attack for the units so the enemy buildings can be destroyed. I implemented an attack module which can handle all important information for attacking like damage, attack speed and range. Very simple for now, but does the job. The next important feature I want to work on is a fog of war system. This term describes the fog you see in many, many, many RTS. It's the area you need to explore. The idea is to motivate the player more to start explore the map. So I started again with the sphere. This sphere is black. When spawning a unit or building, the current location of this building or unit is sent to a fog of war handler. The fog of war handler saves the position of a unit or building into a texture with a vision radius each has. This texture is a representation of the current tiles the player has seen. This texture is now sent to the shader of the black sphere. I map every vertex to a pixel on the texture. I also move the vertex which you have discovered into the planet to get this nice 3D effect of the fog of war. Most strategy games have two layers of fog of war. One layer is what you have explored in your map, the second layer is what you currently see. With this layer you can see the current moving units. So I made a second fog of war handler, this time handling what the player currently sees. Every frame I collect all the positions and update the visibility texture. I think the result looks quite nice. Now I have moving units and buildings to construct. So the basic mechanics for the RTS are done. But what's the next step? Well, winning is the keyword. How do you win? This is a good question. To be honest, I currently have an idea, but this needs to be figured out in the future. My approach is that you need to kill all of the enemy buildings. Now I need to add a component that tracks the current amount of enemy buildings and a victory screen. And this is how we can win a game. Currently this is not that fun, but in theory the main game loop is done. This is it. This is what I have done in the last two months. Quite a bit, not? I mean, I can even play the game. So now it's time to add new features, like more buildings, production chains, more units, better enemy bases and attacking waves from the enemy maybe even start to colonize other planets. So, see you in the next one.